Hey everyone, my name is Fergus Early. I'm product manager on Google Play, focused on app excellence. And I'm Ricardo, engineering manager on Play. Uh, I'm Shanil Dio, I'm CEO of Halfbrick Studios. Great, and we're here to talk to you about five new products we're announcing at this year's Google I.O. to help you achieve a, sm a better app rating on Google Play. So what we found through a lot of data analysis, feedback from users, feedback from developers, is that there's two major components to achieving a high rating on Google Play. One is technical app quality, and the other is listening to users and interacting with them to be able to have them feel that you're giving them what they need and having good experience. So first we're gonna jump in to improving your technical app quality. Last year we announced a Cloud Test Lab, and as you heard today with Jason in the keynote, we now have Firebase Test Lab, which has run since last year over a million tests on real physical Android devices in a Google data center running developers like yourselves apps. And if you haven't used it so far, go ahead and go to the Firebase Test Lab today and start using it. You can use it from Android Studio, you can use it from the Firebase console, or you can even use it from the command line. Within Play, we've had an integration where you don't have to write any custom scripts, and we will give you a report back of how your app performs on 10 plus physical devices, and we're now updating that this year with the pre-launch report. Before I jump into what exactly is in the pre-launch report, hands up if you have an app on Google Play today. Okay, and keep your hand up if you tested your app on more than 10 physical devices with your latest version that you pushed out. Okay, I'm impressed with some people here. Now keep your hand up if you were able to get those results from those 10 devices within an hour. Okay, we got one person at Spotify down the back who's uh, impressive. Um, and uh, I'm here to show you how all of you can have your hand up to that question if you're ever asked again. So with the pre-launch report, we have three sections today. The crashes section shows you how your app performs when a robot is interacting with it for about five minutes on real physical Android devices representing a range of devices um, and form factors. And uh, here you can see that we show you over time how your latest versions are uh, impacted by the robot interacting with them. You can see that 453, a few older versions ago, the app wasn't doing so well and the vast majority of devices were experiencing a crash. And with the latest few versions, it was doing pretty good until the last version which had two crashes detected. As you scroll down this part of the report, you can be able to see the details on the devices that were tested. You can be able to click on any device and you can be able to see the stack trace if there was a crash, the log cache, the device configuration, a video of the robot interacting with your app, and lots of other information to help you with actually fixing the issue that has been detected. Now we know that all the developers in this room never have crashes, so we thought, how can we make the report still valuable for you guys? And uh, so we are introducing the screenshot section, where you can, we show you usability issues that are potentially occurring with your app. So here we show you what your app looks like on different Android versions, different models, different screen sizes, different screen resolutions, and even different languages. So you can be able to see if there's any issues when your app runs in Arabic in right to left language. You can see when you're going for the emerging market, you can see what your app looks like in Hindi. When you're going to uh, look at languages that have longer strings, like German, you can be able to see what it looks like in those. And as you can see in this example here, there's a layout issue that's occurring in German. And I'd encourage you to have your designers go through and have a look at these results as well, because this is a really valuable for them to be able to see what the app looks like on all these Android devices with not much work for them. The final part of the pre-launch report is the security section. And this is where we put Google security team to work for you, and where we show you known vulnerabilities that we detect in your application before you launch it out to the 1.2 billion Android users. For developers who don't, don't have lots of resources and um, want to be able to get quick testing, this has been a really valuable resource for them. Now, it doesn't replace all your testing, but it's a really good way to be able to enhance your existing QA and testing of your application, as the Flink team has identified. To be able to get access to the pre-launch report, you just need to go to the Play Developer Console, click on the pre-launch report tab, which replaces the previous Cloud Test Lab in the Play Developer Console, and you can click to opt in. 
from that point on, when you upload an ABK to your alpha or beta channel, we'll generate a pre-launch report for you within an hour of uploading your APK. And, uh, and so yeah, we think that this is really, really valuable. In the past, we found that 60% of the top 1,000 apps on Play are already running alpha and beta channel uh, testing. And if you're not doing it today, we'd highly encourage you to do so. Great, so the pre-launch report fits into the before you launch your app and trying to figure out if there's any issues with it. But as you all know, it's always that there's issues that occur in the field and that's where we have tools now for live in production too. So as you're rolling out your app, you should use stage rollouts if you don't already, and this is where you can be able to roll it out to 1%, 5%, 50% of your play audience, and be able to see how you, new and existing users are experiencing the latest version of your app. And as you do that, you should be able to monitor your crash reports. We encourage developers to use ProGuard to be able to obfuscate their code when they release an AVK. If you are a ProGuard user, you can be now be able to upload your ProGuard mapping file to the Google Play Developer Console and have your stack traces deobfuscated for you when you actually go to look at any crashes that have occurred out in the wild. As you heard Jason today in the keynote, we now have a full cross-platform crash reporting tool for iOS and Android called Firebase Crash Reporting. This is part of a much larger suite of analytics and notifications. So if, let's say, Sundar is using your app and he experiences a crash, then you can be able to see how his engagement in your app has changed, and you can be able to send him a notification when you fix that issue that he's experiencing. Uh, this is completely free, and uh, it's available starting today. So if you use this, your ProGuard mapping files that you upload as part of Play will also work for the Firebase crash reporting. All you have to do is link your account. So we've gone over, in terms of technical app quality, the pre-launch report before release, and when you're live in production, the crash reporting part. I'm going to hand it over to Ricardo to talk about the new three tools that we have available for customer interaction. Cool. So Fergus told you how you can focus on improving your app technical quality with the tools that we announced. But listening to your users is equally important. And we could say you know, the customer is always right. So you should really focus on listening and understanding what your users are telling you to make your application great. But it's not only a matter of making your users happy. It can also have a significant impact on your performance of your app. Gameville, popular game studio, they focused on improving the quality of one of their app from 3.3 stars to 4.1. And over the same period, they observed that their revenue increased by 160%. So this is pretty significant and a good incentive to make your applications great. Aviary tells us that it's never too early to start collecting feedback from your users, even when your app is still in development, even when you're still not live. And this can have a significant impact on your development speed, and your iteration speed, and how quickly you can, you can launch your app in production. So for this, we have a few announcements to make. The first one is I'd like to announce early access in Google Play. So this is a new program that allows users, early adopters, to find apps that are still in development straight from the Play Store. As part of early access, if you are using an open beta, if you're running an open beta, even if your app is still not in production, users will be able to find and opt in to your app, to your open beta, straight from the store listing page of your app in the Google Play Store. And this is a great way also to start collecting early feedback from these users and help them help you give you, improve your quality of your app, collect that early feedback while you're still developing your app, and really make it great for the moment you're going ready to go to production. In fact, until now, it was the case that if you were running a private beta or an alpha and beta, users would not be able to review or rate your app. As part of early access, users will be able to write a private feedback that is directed only to you developers. And it's a way for your early adopters to give feedback on how you can improve your app while you're getting ready for your launch. They can go to the Play Store, to your store listing section, and just leave feedback there. It's private. It does not affect your overall app rating. It's available only to you. On your side, as a developer, you can go to the Play Developer Console, and you will find that in the Ratings and Review page, there is a new section which is called beta feedback. In here, 
you can find everything that your early adopters have shared with you. And you can use filters and search to obviously navigate through this feedback, and you can reply to them to start engaging in a conversation with them. So we hope that this is gonna be a great way to increase the amount of early feedback that you get while your app is still in development. So let's add another tool to what we mentioned so far. Beta feedback, very helpful, we expect, we hope, as one of the tools that you will use while you're still in the early development phases of your app. At some point, you're ready to go to, to, go to production, and now the game changes. You're gonna get a lot more reviews, a lot more feedback, and it becomes important to be able to sift through these reviews and early identify what matters, where you should spend your attention, what are the bits that your users are telling you that are really important. And so we have a few more things to help you out with this. First, as you already know, in the rating section of the developer console, you have access to an indication of your overall app rating, historical trends, how it is changing over time, and drill downs and breakdowns on how your rating changes across countries and across application versions. But what we really focused on is making the reviews part even better. We really want to be able to capture the most of what your users are telling you and make it available to you in the easiest way possible. So we have a few things to announce. First, in the reviews part of the developer console, you will find highlights. Highlights are salient snippets that we have extracted from user reviews. They are available to you in the developer console and they are also visible to your users straight from the Play Store in your store listing page. They are a great way to understand what capture your users' attention and also what signals users use to decide whether to install your application or not. One new thing that you will find is topics. Again, in the reviews part of the developer console, what we've done is we're using machine learning and natural language processing to look at all the reviews that are being submitted for your app and identify peculiar topics that are specific to your app. For example, if you're a language learning app, you might find that your users find it really difficult to learn Klingon. Or they might comment on the quality of your spoken translations or the availability of an offline mode for your app. If you're a car racing game, people may comment on the quality of the graphics or the difficulty of the gameplay. For each topic that we identify, you will be able to observe the distribution of ratings and the volume of reviews that mention that specific topic. And also, we give you an indication of how big of an effect user reviews and ratings on that specific topic have on your overall app rating. So the more the red, the bigger the opportunity that you have to really focus on addressing your users' concerns on that specific topic and increase your overall app rating. And we hope that this will be, this will be a great way to help you prioritize your attention and really focus on the things that matter most for your users. But we have one more thing. We also have benchmarks. So what we did, again, we used machine learning to look at all the reviews that have been submitted in the Play Store for all the apps, and we identified eight common traits, common aspects that we think pertain and can be quantified for any app in the store. From its design, its usability, the stability and bug of the apps, the stability and bugs, the speed of the app. And for each of these topics, we quantify how you score on those topics, what is your rating on those specific topics, and again, how much your users are talking about these aspects. And as I mentioned before, you get an, in, you get an indication of where you should focus your attention with the factor rating, which tells you where you have the biggest opportunity to capture a good chunk of your rating score back. Groupon was one of our testers, and they have great feedback to say how much it, used, it helped them prioritize their work and focus on what really matters. But you don't really have only to trust our words. We can look at some data. So one thing that we did is we looked at all the English reviews in the Play Store where we could identify at least one topic. And here is what we found. For all the reviews that are one star, in 50% of the cases, people will be complaining about the stability and bugs of the app. For all the reviews that are five stars, 65% of your users will be praising the speed, design, and usability of your app. 
you can go to the developer console and look at what the data looks like for your app. And we think that this is going to be a great way for you to understand maybe where you're letting your users submit down, and on the other side, where your app is really, really shining. And it will be a great way to improve your app rating. OK, so this is great. Now you understand where you should focus your attention, what your users are telling you. The next step is to start engaging in a conversation with them. Because having an active conversation with your, your users can make a real difference. With filters and search functionality, you can drill down from the topics and benchmarks that I mentioned before, the specific reviews that contribute to them. And once you have identified a review that you really need to take action on, obviously you want to reply to your users because it's really important to start addressing their feedback. But one thing that we announced a few weeks ago is the ability to be notified whenever one of your users update or change their review as of after your reply. And this is a great way to stay in touch with your users and the ones that are willing to engage in a conversation. And it can really have an impact. In fact, we have seen great adoption over time. As of today, 40% of Play top developers have enabled this feature to be notified whenever I, one of your users to which you reply to comes and update the review so you can stay in touch with what they're saying. So if you're not using yet, go to the developer console today and give it a try. You will start receiving emails and notifications whenever your users change the review so you can stay on top of things. Engaging with your users in an active conversation and replying to their reviews is really important. It's a crucial part of your app quality. Users are really expecting this for, um, from any developer these days. And in fact, we have seen great adoption of the functionality of being able to reply to your, user, your users' reviews over time. 92% growth year over year. The Guardian, popular newspaper in the UK, considers replying to reviews an invaluable part of their customer management experience. So if you're not replying to your users yet, go ahead and start doing that because I'm pretty sure all of you want a bunch of five-star loyalists for your app as well. But replying to your users from the developer console can be quite cumbersome if you have a ton of re reviews. And we have heard from many of you that you would like a way to be able to deal with your customers at scale. So starting today, we have a new API available among the APIs part of the Play Developer Experience that lets you fetch and reply to your users' reviews with just a handful, a couple of lines of code. If you're not in the mood of writing a couple of lines of code, we also have integrations, zero effort, available out of the box with some of the most popular customer management solutions out there, like Zendesk and Converse Social. So if you're using Zendesk, for example, you can just go to your Zendesk account with a couple of clicks, link it with Play, and start receiving your reviews directly in Zendesk integrate them with your flow in there, reply from there, and see them be propagated live in the Play Store within seconds. Responding to your users, let me say once more, is really, really important. Here is another data point that we noticed. Users that come and update their star rating after you have engaged with them, after you have responded to their review, on average, increase their star rating by 0.71 stars. And this is pretty significant because it's the difference between a four star app and a 4.7 star app, which can be really, really massive. So we covered a ton of stuff so far from when you're still developing your app to when you're live, from telemetry and crash reporting to managing user reviews. I would like now to have Chanil, he's the CEO of Halfbrick, creator of great hits like Fruit Ninja and Jetbike Joride, give a demonstration of how they're using the feature in their own world. Thanks, Ricardo. So, hey, guys, I'm going to give you a, a few demonstrations of how we're using some of these tools at Huffbrick. Yeah. Just to give you guys some idea of, you know, I guess, what I'm trying to do with, um, you know, I guess, reviews and customer service at Huffbrick. Uh, we have a goal where we try and have all of our apps at 4.5 stars or greater. So it's a, it's a pretty lofty goal, and I guess it's one that we're um, you know, trying to find new ways to sort of hit. There you go. There you go. OK, thank you. So I'm going to show you how we're using the Zendesk integration, uh, as well as the pre-launch reports and uh, the reviews analysis tool. So um, who uses Zendesk here for their customer support? Okay, And um, who actually replies to their Google reviews? 
Okay, a lot of people, that's really great. So, you know, one of the things that I'm gonna show you is, I guess, how easy it is to sort of pipe in all of your um, Google Play reviews into Zendesk and then actually reply to them. So, I'll start off by creating a new review for Jetpack Drawride. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So I'm filtering out four and five star reviews, so I'll give it a three star review. Hopefully this will come through. So let's see how we go. I think it's worth more than three stars, by the way. Uh, okay, so for this particular one, I'll, I'll just put in a, a review uh, to say I'm addicted to this game. And, but, but uh, I'd love to save my high scores. I'd love to save. Okay. So let's submit that. And I guess it's going to take a little bit of time to submit it, but then it'll take a little bit of time to come through uh, into Zendesk as well. And if it doesn't, I have a backup one that I've created previously. So let's see how we go. Okay. All right, maybe I might go to the, uh, the pre-generated one. Let's see that. Hang on a second. Okay, so this is a review that, that um, we put in previously um, and, it's, and it's come through to Zendesk. So what I'll do is, um, for those of you that have used Zendesk, you can set up macros that allow you to reply uh, really easily. So I've created one previously, which is, let me see. So okay, um, the review that I put in was about saving, um, saving high scores. So this, this pre-populated one is about how to actually do that. So we'll just go through, uh, we'll submit this as pending. Um, and then, we'll click through to the Google Play Store. And um, as you can see, the response um, that I put in previously uh, has come through straight away. So, you know, talking to our, our customer support agents, um, one of the things that I stress to them is I want them to reply to pretty much every single one star review that comes in. And they were doing a lot of this manually themselves, but after using this for one week, um, you know, one of the quotes that they said was, you know, one of the statistics that they really look at is that first uh, touch time statistic. And they said, um, you know, when this feature came through, their first touch time statistic uh, for the initial week uh, it was implemented was still within their KPI, which is less than 24 hours. So they were able to handle, I guess, all of their existing volume uh, of support requests, which is quite, quite a number. I think Jetpack has over 3 million sort of reviews as well as lots of tickets that come in. Um, but they managed to handle that as well as respond to Google Play reviews all within 24 hours. So you know, it's a really, really uh, amazing feature and our guys really love it. So um, I guess that's one side of the equation which is actually responding to reviews uh, and, and tickets as they come in. The other thing that's really crucial for us is to actually analyze the reviews. And as part of trying to hit 4.5 stars, We've created a whole bunch of tools that our guys use to actually try and make some sense of the reviews that are coming in. So as I mentioned, Jetpack has a lot of reviews every day. So if we jump across to, uh, just give me a second here. Yeah, that one's frozen. If we jump to the developer console. So, um, okay, so if we go to the reviews and ratings, as you can see, here's the reviews analysis tab. So as uh, Ricardo mentioned, there's a number of things here. I mean, there's the review highlights. 
uh, which is really good to see. Uh, it gives you a quick sort of idea of what's going on um, with the app. But the thing that's more important for our guys is the benchmarks because you know it really gets, goes to show you um, which areas of your app you know I guess are not doing so favorably. And as you can see here. Stability is obviously you know, one of the biggest factors, and I guess the stats that the guy shared clearly shows that. So, I mean, stability is one thing, but it's, you know, it's hard to figure out what it is exactly. I mean, you can look at crash reports and various other things. But this tool really allows you to drill down um, you know, quite easily. So we can look at, obviously, you know, click on um, stability. And see, and see the various reviews that come through. Um, so there's a number of different reviews. I think one of the things that I really like is the fact that you can you know, obviously filter these. And, and once again, one of the go-tos is to look at the one-star sort of ratings. So if you look here, um, most of it will be uh, based around various, various crash issues. And uh, you can see our guys are actually replying to all of these reviews. So 17th of May, I think that was yesterday. Um, they're just going through and they're responding to all of these. So most of these reviews are, OK, the thing is buggy. Uh, and that's, that can only tell you so much. So one of the other areas that's really interesting is, is the topics that people are talking about. And uh, I know that with Starskater in particular, when we released it, one of the, the key issues that we had was around the controls. And so you can see here that actually controls is the number one factor that's affecting our ratings. So once again, you, know, you can jump in and you can have a look at uh, control issues as well. Uh, so the filter that I put on is already there, the one star. You can go through and have a look at all of the, the different issues that people are having with controls. And you know, sometimes people just say, okay, the controls suck. But other times you find some really useful information in here as well. And, and it really allows our guys to hone in on, I guess, the key things that are going to impact on improving uh, the reviews. So once again, uh, we have internal tools for this, but uh, you know, these tools in the developer console just save us so much time. And particularly for our larger games where there's so many reviews, it's really hard. You know, we don't have the, the um, I guess, the machine learning to, to process all of that information and give us the, the key insights. So it's a really good tool. And, and I think, um, you know, we'll see over the coming months how it just helps us reach our target of 4.5 stars. So, okay, the last tool that I wanted to show you is the pre-launch report. And uh, we have an internal QA team at Halfbrick, and the way they work is they wait until, I guess, a build has been submitted or uploaded before they start testing. And one of the first things that they do is a smoke test. And so we can't cover like 10 devices you know, within, a, within a short amount of time. So this has been really, um, really helpful for us. So you can see here the latest build that they uploaded um, of Starskater had a problem on the you know, Nexus 5 with Android version 5.1. So Nexus 5 with Android version 4.4 was fine. Um, but obviously, you know, the, the problem was with 5.1. So this saves a lot of time. Our guys don't even have to start QAing uh, until they get a bill that sort of passes, you know, passes some of the key tests on these devices. Um, so similarly, similarly with the screenshots, uh, one of the other tools that we really invested a lot into uh, was how to go about supporting all the different aspect ratios and form factors of devices. So I might switch to another app here. Um, let's look at Dan the Man, which is still um, in soft launch. So I'll quickly jump to the pre-launch report. So crashes, no crashes, which is really good. Um, screenshots, so we can have a look and see the various screenshots and the different form factors. So, you know, obviously, this is something that you can mess up quite easily. I don't think we currently support languages other than English at this point. So, we're not really getting a good read on that, but we can see, okay, we can, you know, all the aspect ratios look pretty good. All the different form factors look pretty good. So, once again, this sort of saves a lot of time. And, and we did build these tools internally, but they're not integrated into. I guess everything around the developer console, so you know it's not as efficient for us to use. Um, so the last thing, and, and this one is, I guess, really important for me, 
uh, because we have had issues in the past with uh, security for some of our apps. And, and typically, these are some of our older legacy apps, which we released the last update months and months ago. And now to come back and actually fix those security issues uh, is a real nightmare because you know the code base has changed so much and you have to get the thing rebuilding again. So being able to upload and get, I guess, a security scan to say everything's OK is great because you know, if there is something wrong, you can fix it then and there and not have to come back to it you know, months, down the, months down the road. So this is another really important feature that our guys use all the time. OK, so I guess that's a quick overview of some of these features. Um, my, my main sort of feedback uh, really is that these can help you really raise the quality bar for your apps and uh, you know, the, the resulting user reviews that you get. So you know, I'd highly recommend you check them out, get familiar with them, and try and use them as much as you can. It'll save you a lot of time and allow you to hit your ratings, goals that you set for yourself. So thank you. I might hand back to Focus. Thank you. Thanks so much, Daniel. Great. Thanks very much, Janil. Uh, it's always great to hear it from a developer, because as the app and tool creators, we kind of are a bit biased. So thanks, Janil. So uh, we've gone over five different tools today. And I really encourage you to take advantage of all of them. Pre-launch report for early on the development cycle. Um, when you're building that latest version of your app, use Firebase Test Lab. Then last sanity check, pre-launch report. Then when you're actually in that phase as well, start doing beta testing and have your private communication one-to-one -one with your uh, beta testers and without that impacting your star rating. Then once you've launched, start using Firebase Crash to monitor your app out there in the wild to see if there are any, are any crashes that are, are impacting your users and be able to see what, it, what crashes are actually the most impactful to the business metrics that you care about so you can be able to prioritize which crashes you fix. Uh, the reviews analysis, really helpful to be able to understand the reviews at scale and your functional areas within your company so your designers can go in, read all the reviews about design, the person who's going to work on the crashes and stability of your app can go in, read all the reviews talking about crashes without having to go through all the reviews to find those ones about crashes. And the reviews API, so your customer support team can be able to use their existing workflow of whatever customer support tool they use. Initial partners are Zendesk and Converse Social, but I'm sure many will follow to be able to respond to your reviews um, right there.